हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू दिस लास्ट सेशन ऑफ प्रोडक्ट एंड ब्रांड मैनेजमेंट आई एम श्योर यू वुड हैव लर्न फ्यू थिंग्स अप टिल नाउ यू वुड हैव स्टार्टेड एप्रिशिएटिंग द पावर ऑफ ब्रांड वी हैव टॉक्ड अबाउट ब्रांड पावर यू यू वुड हैव स्टार्टेड एप्रिशिएटिंग हाउ ब्रांड्स आर बिल्ड अप एंड बाय नाउ प्रोबली यू हैव स्टार्टेड नोटिसिंग हाउ ब्रांड मैनेजर्स दे आर वॉचिंग अस they are actually pursuing the energy the strength of their brands into our lives with our acceptance while they are generating that acceptance and pursuing us towards those brands and those brands towards us and that is a very beautiful kind of you know uh, an association because ultimately we start living with those brands we start relying on those brands and why not they are trustworthy there are many products there are many products represented by those brands who have generated a lots of trust in our minds and hearts and definitely has done lots of good for us and that is where this whole relationship comes up i'll be demonstrating the culmination of our journey through and through with the help of a case study patanjali ayurved limited wherein i would be suggestive of few elements which are visible in patanjali as an organization here i am using few of my own case studies published along with my co-authors dr anita singer of university of petroleum and energy studies dehradun and uh, dr rajat agarwal from uh he is a professor at iit roorkee department of management studies so we wrote two case studies uh, published case studies we are using that and then some good eminent authors which i am uh, referring to i would be taking their names and uh, the, some of those uh, case studies are published in good uh, you know uh, uh, publications so we will be using that to refer to patanjali uh, as uh, an organization so here uh, you know the the perspective is around uh, brand development as such let's look at it uh, you see the story actually starts from 1932 wherein uh, you know patanjali got associated with an organization which was established in uh, 1932 they they might have started their journey from that uh, place that is why this this is mentioned and then 1995 uh, divya yog mandir trust uh came in as far as existence goes and then uh, you know 97 divya pharmacy came in 2004 uh, this idea conception to open food park in the year 2004 came in as has been uh, you know uh, uh, yog uh, guru swami ramdev ji he uh, you know uh, started addressing yoga camp and the st- whole story started from there itself wherein uh, he started uh, you know uh, teaching yoga to people basically it started benefiting people and this organization started propelling and expanding its wings 2006 patanjali ayurved came into being and then patanjali food and herbal park came in 2010 it's an integrated uh, production facility uh, in padartha near laksar uh, a place near to haridwar so and uh, 2017 patanjali leaped to 15th position from 173rd position so almost a jump of 160 positions or let's say to be precise 158 positions in brand trust report now that is where branding perspective comes in you see the point is within one year a, a huge jump because they were working upon that and that culminated and flourished in the form of as far as their positioning goes and the, their brand trust and brand valuation and brand position goes we will see that so you see and, and uh, patanjali expanding uh, fundamentally in terms of uh, you know so many elements uh, and, and a huge hierarchy in terms of educational setups also in terms of schools also in terms of several other kinds of Uh, you know avenues where in research and development goes and in several c- categories of products so for example uh, natural health care they have several products uh, there is there is uh, a ghee then you know uh, there there are several other things there are juices and uh, there is honey and uh, these are all known products and i will be showing you the complete chart later on so there is uh, you know uh, 
uh, then then uh, uh, rice is there, jam is there, biscuits are there and so on and then nutraceuticals are there, this is a segment which they are pursuing and uh, herbal home care is there, then uh, you know uh, face wash category is there and, and uh, you know toothpaste is there and so on. So, and then there are Ayurvedic medicines as well and then they are in strongly into treatments also, uh, Ayurvedic treatments also and, and lots of uh, you know uh, research also. Let us look at this chart once again, this is a this is a chart which I am showing you time and again in last session also I uh, reflected upon this, but briefly just to tell you that starting their journey from salience to performance imagery, judgments and feelings, they have very quickly reached to the stage of resonance. Let us briefly look into these elements. You see here in Patanjali's case when we talk of salience, so Patanjali's products as natural with Ayurvedic properties and the products you know uh, generally used by the people who are health conscious also and now otherwise as well. So, it, it relate to the you know healthy lifestyle and lots of acceptance and adaptation has come in due course of time starting from salience to imagery to you know the next stages basically and especially reaching to the place of resonance wherein people have started becoming health conscious in due course of time. Probably many of them they are not still using Patanjali products, but again the point is that they have sort of got this glimpse of that what health consciousness is. Although there are several other factors, several other organizations, very good organizations working in the field on, on the similar lines. Now, and then uh, you see uh, the kind of uh, tagline or slogan they are using is Prakriti ka Ashirvat. So, that is where uh, this this uh, 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 you know uh, tagline comes into play and we have talked about this. Then comes in brand identity wherein they focused upon Swadeshi, Ayurved and nutrition. So, wellness and nutrition. So, these are the three elements which they have focused upon to as far as develop a brand identity in all their products largely, they encompass as far as these three elements of Swadeshi, Ayurved and wellness and nutrition goes. I would not be going uh, uh, back into those fundamentals because we have already discussed that. Then comes in brand imagery and, and you, you by now very well know that we are talking of the, uh, the stages of the pyramid. So, you see the brand attributes such as creating quality image, the products being sourced naturally, being purely herbal and the portrayal of the brand as totally Ayurvedic is related to as far as their brand imagery goes. Then comes in brand performance. They have worked hard as far as you know reaching to uh, the hearts and minds of uh, customers in terms of the benefits, in terms of uh, customers realizing those benefits and there is a whole lot of data to support that and now it has become uh, an aspect of word of mouth as far as the whole scenario and situation goes. Then comes in one of the most important parts and I will spend few seconds over here uh, that is associated with brand resonance, the topmost part of the brand, uh, brand pyramid. Now, you see the point is one Patanjali has taken a very short span of time to reach there and getting associated with millions of customers and that too with lots of resonance and uh, you know active loyalty that is that is where uh, that is what is the key element of brand resonance if you would remember that. Now, you see they were able to build an emotional connect with the audience with their product positioning and Swadeshi campaigns. Uh, Swami Ramdev ji in his yoga sessions and discourses narrated various aspects such as the importance of products made in India, effects of uh, you know ill effects of you know synthetically processed uh, products definitely. So, he compared those kind of things and, and uh, although there are studies which support that uh, there are not so uh, ill effects, but again to support the natural perspective he had stronger comparative studies and, and that is what he did. So, he did not uh, denounce anything unscientifically, but he compared that with the perspective of natural which was again a strong edge actually. So, uh, then you see comes in uh, as far as that that actually brought in uh, strong brand feeling and uh, the point here is 
uh, he also focused upon uh, potential benefits to farmers uh, you know in uh, all through the campaigns and while developing this association with the farming community as such so brand feeling come come in, uh, comes into being basically further customers who were expecting the quality and price offered by them and the early adopters also so uh, more or less both of these kinds of customers they came in together and propelled uh, the the further awareness by being brand ambassadors or let's say ambassadors or loyal customers through their word of mouth so that is where you know feelings and judgments and those kind of things they come into being and and that is how brand resonance got developed 20 years journey we all know they have huge uh, uh, customer base and lots of uh, you know retailers associated with them huge retail chain and so on now you see uh, when we talk of uh, sources of brand equity of patanjali so uh, you know there there is an element of brand awareness uh, brand recognition brand recall and and uh, brand image and so on but uh, let's look at what happened at the end of the day or or up till now the the story is going and uh, last interaction uh, i had with their organization i realized that they have huge expansion plans brand extension is the key which they are following a huge hierarchy is coming up in terms of brand and uh, what i realized most uh, you know the, the as as the most important element was that they have a strong brand architecture in place so they are focusing upon corporate branding and they are actually working through uh, uh, enhancement of the brand portfolio on the one side and on the other side they are continuously focusing upon as far as uh, the brand potential goes and and uh, i'll be showing you brand architecture once again just to make you realize that what is happening so just look at this situation basically so patanjali is in between and there is a natural personal care then nutraceuticals then herbal home care on one side and so many products i would not read all of them for you here but but uh, you, you just can spend some time here so and then there are natural food products natural health care on this side as well and, and ayurvedic medicines on this side so you have biscuits and cookies and jams and candies and namkeens and grocery you know salt flour sugar rice on one side and the point is if you will realize looking at this whole scenario uh that they have sort of an integrated value chain that is the source the farm produce which is coming to them in an integrated kind of a fashion then the processing is also done in an integrated kind of a fashion with lots of technology infusion and and lots of upgraded kind of manufacturing systems uh with zero waste plants uh you know they they have come up and and they are coming up with large number of such kinds of integrated facilities all around and they are recycling almost everything in terms of waste even in terms of waste water to be utilized for better purposes and they have associated their value chain partners as their customers as well as beneficiaries now that is a very important kind of a thing which one must realize when we are talking of building up of brand goes that how well you are integrating the complete value chain we have talked about value chain and we have talked about the transition of one stage to other stage with the help of the multipliers but just imagine that along with pursuing those value stages with the help of multipliers you are actually integrating all these stages together somehow and converting your stockholders as your beneficiaries as well as your customers uh, your customers as your beneficiaries and your suppliers as well so it's whole lot of a integration which we are talking about here and and that's that is a very important kind of a thing which patanjali pursued in due course of time i'll be taking you through again this is a, uh, you know an important thing which we have discussed earlier but just look at this the brand value chain and now look at what patanjali did in terms of uh, you know uh, marketing program investment for example so here i would be referring to program quality multipliers in terms of distinctiveness you know 
most of their marketing campaigns are different from uh, their competitors and main focus of the organization is to develop the consumption of ayurvedic products natural and herbal and uh, you know they have a value proposition as i talked about they have generated lots of relevance for the customer and the biggest point of relevance definitely is associated with as far as the purity goes in today's era when health is a big concern for all of us in that era when we try to pursue purity natural that definitely is attractive to customers it's relevant to customers and that is what they have done and they have gone ahead with lots of clarity their 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 product promotions and advertising messages are executed in a very simple straightforward manner and you know simply projecting the key words and in most of the advertisements uh, baba ramdev ji is himself the brand ambassador actually because people rely on his uh, you know uh, 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 practice of yoga his personality and and his connect and association with the science of yoga basically so uh, they they trust him as a personal person who actually emanates uh, uh, the uh, you know uh, focus on as far as uh, wellness health uh, intensity of yoga importance of yoga in life and so on so you see a person who actually is pursuing an organization becomes the brand ambassador and himself demonstrates that now that is a very important kind of a thing basically which is many a times a rare, a rare thing actually and that is that becomes a reason for trust many a times in front of the customers you see i myself am the advocate of my products basically and many many uh, organization leaders they have done that successfully so then in terms of consistency they have been extremely consistent in promoting things with all the three elements which i have talked about uh, earlier and now look at you know customers mindset which is which cannot be built overnight you know even with the extensive effort or you know single marketing program investment or or let's say large marketing program investment it still requires time actually so uh, the the point is that patanjali brand image is is driven and built upon the basis of 20 years of rigorous hard work around yoga and ayurveda by swami ramdev ji and for this uh, you know these kind of uh, uh, outcomes and findings although this is known to almost everyone in terms of people who have used their products or who have just watched them uh, uh, as an organization and a brand growing around but but for this we have uh, used s puri a ajay js chuk 2016 patanjali takes on industry giants harvard business publishing so this is the reference and, and then hindu business line is also referred to in terms of uh, you know few of the aspects so then comes in you know patanjali products are promoted as herbal organic and ayurvedic products and that brings in association but through the brand ambassador himself and then there are elements of attachment and then there are elements of activity you see they targeted rural and uh, semi urban markets first and on the other side lots of international customers they also got got attracted towards them remember the reason the most important reason have been the association of people with this organization for health related benefits actually and that i am a personal witness to i have seen several kinds of people coming to practice yoga and change their lives in their camps now there are many organizations working on that and there are eminent organizations working on that but integrating everything with uh, you know a brand in itself that is uh, you know generating a brand while integrating the benefits and the uh, associations of people and their uh, you know attachment basically that is what patanjali did and then they uh, went into Uh, you know consumer products and uh, you see the original thought which uh, uh, they uh, they brought up they they came up with in terms of uh, you know developing this uh, consumer products is related to that how else they can benefit their uh, uh, beneficiaries 
what what else they can do and they realize that they should be developing medicines they should be developing products they should be developing several other processes and so on and then on the other side they should be doing something which can benefit their suppliers also their farmers also uh, associated farmers also and that is how the whole story came in now now the key perspective comes in on one side one of the founders of the organization is the practitioner is the preacher is the brand ambassador himself on the other side converting everyone in the value chain as the beneficiary is the is the uh, important aspect so these two important aspects definitely brought in lots of trust then comes in you know uh, they generated an integrated value chain as i as i told you and today they have huge number of retailers and and more than uh, hundred thousand uh, direct indirect uh, you know retail chain partners associated with them, wherein many of those partners they have uh, Ayurved practitioners trained by them, positioned there to benefit those people who come to purchase goods from them, so that they can advise rightly on what kind of products would benefit them more. They can give them tips on maintaining their health, and many a times they can, if if uh, you know uh, a, a trained registered Ayurved practitioner is there, uh, who has got his training from their institution, and and uh, otherwise is also recognized as a genuine practitioner. So if that person is sitting there, they can treat the patients as well. So that is how they can uh, they have developed the complete integrated chain as such. I could have talked about several other kinds of organizations who have gone through similar kind of a journey as a case study for you. But I thought that this is one of those brands which has risen sharp in recent years. That is one part plus purely an indigenous brand. The other side uh, a brand which has pursued the well-being of people actually and at large if we will see then uh, this science of Ayurved which actually has been benefiting this part of the world specially for n number of years has been brought up as a mainstream with the help of these organizations and there are many others also. So that is why I thought that it should be more apt for us to think in terms of a journey of a brand with the through the eyes of this kind of an organization which is called Patanjali. So and then there are competitive reactions definitely when, when things are growing competition also is focusing upon and as I said there are other strong organizations HUL has products, Dabur has products and several other organizations they have strong Ayurvedic products and they are doing good. So they came up aggressively as far as the situation goes. So and potentially Ayurved Limited after initially spending less on advertisements they became aggressive on advertising as well and they spent 3 billion rupees in 2015 to cater to the growing market needs and now they have become one of the largest advertisers in Indian landscape uh, as far as uh, you know ad spend goes. So uh, they hired and, and uh, this data is from the same case study which I am referring to published in Harvard Publishing, uh, Harvard Business Publishing uh, and uh, uh, they that, that case says that they uh, worked with reputed creative agencies like or, or probably they are still working with those agencies uh, DDB Mudra and McCann. So these are eminent uh, advertising companies and, and you see these kind of advertisers they started working with Patanjali and they became the, the point is they became serious on generating brand awareness in terms of uh, you know their customers and going ahead with their strong awareness and uh, brand presence as such. So, and then uh, you know in terms of market performance as I said the company source raw materials directly from the farmers. So developing a direct connect with, with the value chain and uh, market share rose according to Statista in 2018 Dandkanti their uh, you know a very important product uh, their toothpaste. 
so uh, has achieved uh, it achieved 11 percent market share in, in 2018 so uh, current data can be cross verified how is it doing and uh, you see uh, currently as far as market performance goes once again currently in terms of profitability in 2021 so, uh, potentially Ayurveda Limited is making 20 percent operating profit which is higher than the industry average that is precisely the point stakeholders value or stockholders value whichever way you like to look at it. Uh, in 2016 potentially entered the ranks of top 10 advertisers as I told you in 2017 it was the third largest ad spender in the country. It, it, uh, it again has a strong connect with as far as you know pursuing all of your products in terms of when you have large brand portfolio or, or uh, especially your umbrella brand is strong and then you have several kinds of products within that umbrella brand. And then there are there, there is an aspect of investor sentiment multiplier uh, it is needless to mention that they have been doing exceptionally well in terms of that account. And then just to tell you, uh, you know, just to give you a glimpse of the fast moving consumer goods sector in India is fourth largest sector with household and personal care accounting for 50 percent of FMCG sales in India wherein Patanjali has acquired a suitable kind of a space. And, and that can be verified through lots of data. And this, these slides I have fetched from Statista. So, revenue of Patanjali Ayurveda across India from financial year 2010 to financial year 2020, I will just reiterate uh, 20 in front of you. Uh, so, in billion Indian rupees, it is 90 plus billion rupees kind of. So, that is the kind of revenue in 2020, but I have been told that in 2021, it is much higher as compared to this. So, I, I just have to I do not have the exact reports with me. So, so you can check it from the credible sources. And then frequency of purchase of potentially products among Indians as of June 2019, there is again slightly older data, but uh, you see how many Indians they are purchasing potentially products, let us say a few times per month, 50 percent. And so, so there definitely is a sample size associated with this kind of a research and there is a complete methodology and sample size explained with this kind of a chart by Statista. So, you can visit that, but the point is it is quite suitable in terms of as far as the growth of a brand goes. If you will look at daily, the 5.29 percent of the sample says that they purchase things daily. So, uh, that means potentially is acquiring a suitable space amongst all types of buyers. And then there are several other things, let us say pre preference of cosmetic brands amongst Indian consumers also, you can check it through website. And here is the most important thing, Patanjali has risen to number 55 in top 100 most valuable Indian brands in 2021. They have risen, they have jumped 10 places from 65 to 55 within one year. And I am not sure what kind of products are, you know, supporting this brand impetus. But again, or, or brand rise, or, or in terms of brand valuation, definitely. But uh, the fundamental element is then in past few years that trust which had taken a deep rooted space within the hearts of their customers is actually blooming and flourishing and the rate of multiplication is higher in terms of as far as their presence in the minds of their customers goes. Plus the actions, the activities which they initiated in past 5 years or so, they are getting converted into market performance and stockholders value as such. And that is precisely the point. We started a journey, we started our journey of brand understanding, especially in brand management discussions, emphasizing on the aspect of differentiation 
and equity. Differentiation we have talked about. Differentiation is very visible in terms of as far as the case of Patanjali goes and equity is visible. That means value derived from the brand architecture thought of and established and value derived out of the value chain which is being pursued or the value stages which are being pursued one after the other. Ultimately, it is a matter of establishing that equity and raising the levels of brand association in the minds of customers. The point is that brand would never die, but the most important element is that would it always grow and that is what we have to learn and understand that brand should always grow. Thank you for being with me for so long. I hope you have enjoyed this journey and I hope that you will feel benefited out of this discussion we have had. I will be always open to all the queries you would send to me and I will be happily, happily resolving everything which I am capable of. Thank you. Goodbye.